Okay, so let's continue with the example. And I prepared, I have prepared this script and the data to use this uh, script is here. I'll share this with the with Tom so he can share that with you as well. And in this example, basically we're gonna see how to do niche overlap with the lib CNN. This is a new package, it's not in current yet. Uh, and it's all about ellipses and ellipsoids in ecological niche model. So let's start with the information. You need species occurrence record, properly clean and processed for this kind of type of analysis. You also need variables masked to the accessible regions uh, for the species. And <clears throat> so in this case, just uh, raw variables, the raw bioclimatic variables were summarized to the three first principal components for temperature and precipitation, but uh, those uh, principal components or those variables were kept separately. Uh, so if you don't have it, install this package called remote. If you have dev tools, you probably have this one. So remote is the one that actually has the function install GitHub. And in that, you can install ellipse.cnn. With that, you can install ellipse.cnn. The packages you're gonna need are ellipse.cnn, of course, RGL for prettier plots, and raster for processing raster layers. Uh, this is my working directory, but please change it to the one you have the data in or where you have your own data once you have uh, well understood all this example. And then let's see the data here. Those are the two species uh, I am going to work with. And then you have a species name, longitude, and latitude, basically those three columns. And the same thing for the other species. Okay. So after that, I'm going to read the layers of environmental data. As I said, those are principal components, and those are principal components for temperature and precipitation separately. Uh, here are the ones for this species temperature variables and this species temperature PCAs, sorry, uh, principal components, sorry. And then we have uh, presentation components. And there you are. So on three, there are three components. So uh, you can see that. Now you have these lines of code here. What I'm doing here is just transforming the variables that are as raster layers here to a matrix. And I'm doing that because that makes the process a lot faster. Let me show you. So I'm just showing you the head of that. And this is what I have. The matrix has three variables you're seeing here. And this is this is what you need basically. Okay. After that, um, I'm going to prepare the data as overlap objects because that's the way you need to have them. So check the functions help. Basically, this prepares an object based on the information that we saw before and some other things here to let the program recognize what's the niche one and what's the niche two that you want to compare. Um, so here, the first part of the function of the first argument is the data and species data. Here you have to specify the column names that have the species information, longitude information, latitude information, the method to construct the ellipsoids. In this case, I'm using MBE1, <clears throat> which stands for 
uh, minimum volume ellipsoid. And one stands for the method that is uh, already implemented in R in other packages. So uh, you can read more about those details here in the help of the function. I'm establishing the level uh, to 95. So basically this is assuming that 5% of the data may be outliers or maybe wrong identifications or they may be problems with there may be problems with the data okay you can uh, establish this as 99 point something but unfortunately i haven't found the way to establish this as uh, 100. so here you have again the variables and this is uh, going to be used here to create the first niche and these are temperature precipitate uh, temperature principal components for the first species and this is all for the second species so i have the two niche objects here you can use that to see what's inside each object or you can also say summary and check what's inside the object okay and then let's see this other part and this other part is where you actually do the ellipse overlap analysis you have here the complete description of the analysis with details about what the function is doing and also some examples so here i'm going to do ellipse overlap of niche one and niche two uh, you have two types of uh, overlap that you can do uh, one is full overlap and the other one is background union uh, i strongly recommend to do background unit because with this one is with the one that you can do all the considerations about what's accessible for the species and all that okay uh, then uh, i'm saying here i want to do a significance test and that analysis is going to be done with 100 replicates and uh, let me just start running so those 100 replicates are 100 100 random samplings from each species accessible area and with those samples that are of size equal to the one that you have occurrences uh, uh, that will help you to create random ellipsoids from it for each species and then compare them each time so each replicate it's creating one ellipsoid for one species from the background one ellipsoid from the other species from its respective background comparing them and storing the overlap value okay and then the confidence limit for the analysis is 0.05 which is kind of a standard in this uh, kind of analysis. So once this is finished, it's not going to take that long. Uh, we're going to see a summary of the results, and it's basically basically going to tell us more about how the ellipsoids were, their characteristics, and the summary of overlap results. So. The method this, that was used was minimum volume ellipsoids one, level 95. Then we have the centroids here for niche one and niche two, the covariance matrix for the two niches, the volumes of the two niches. And as you can see, niche one is bigger than niche two. And then you have the results from overlap. So uh, niche one versus two you have a total point uh, used for the overlap of twenty-five thousand something uh, the ones that are overlap are twenty thousand something so the overlap that you're seeing is 0 0.79 with a p-value of zero so a p-value of zero means uh, you reject the null hypothesis, and the null hypothesis is that the niches overlap. So even though you have a value of 0 0.79, uh, 
that value is non statistical it's not statistically significant when you compare it with the results that you can obtain sampling randomly from the backgrounds okay so here you have more information you have the proportion of size of niche one versus niche two it's 1.1 1 .1. and this other one so niche two versus niche one 0 0.85 which uh proves that niche one is bigger than niche two and you can do that the same thing let's do the same thing for using the variables of principal components derived from precipitation layers okay and there is a reason why i'm doing this many times we have to uh, define what are the variables that we're going to use in ecological niche model and that's very important kind of like you you saw that in in the in the slides i showed you before uh, and it's very important not only because of the way the variables correlate or or how much they contribute to the model and stuff like that are commonly uh, represented in papers but also because of the importance biological importance for the species and uh, these variables are separated temperature of one side and precipitation the other side because those two are they act different they mean different things for the species and if one of those dimensions like the dimension of precipitation is not overlapped and if the dimension of temperature uh, is overlapped for these two species that that has a meaning a biological meaning so we saw first that the values of overlap for temperature for these two species they were high but non statistically significant so now let's see the same thing for precipitation dimensions so Basically, this is the same thing. Of course, centroids change, values change, equivariance matrix change. Uh, the volumes have changed. Look, niche one is 27 something, and niche two is 25 something, almost 26, which means these two volumes are not that different. Uh, but that doesn't mean they do not overlap, or they do overlap. Uh, this is just the volume, it's not this is not related to the position so here are the results you have from 25 something point 23 are overlapped so the overlap is actually 0 0.93 a lot larger than before and the p-value is 0 0.29 so a value of 0 0.29 doesn't allow us to uh, reject the null hypothesis of overlap which means these niches do overlap even considering conditions in available conditions for each species and again same information that we have before okay now let's see how it looks like let's open an rgl uh, i'm going to let it there and i'm going to plot the niche overlap with this function and look this is how the overlap looks like so niche one is in blue niche two is in red and the points that you have there uh, are the background that was used for measuring the overlap and it's only the background that overlaps between the two niches so the color of the background it's representing how close uh, these points are respect to niche one only because like uh, uh, it's the only information either you can plot niche one, closeness to niche centroid of niche one or niche two but that has a meaning as well so the the brighter the color the closest the point to the center and this is what you can see from the analysis they overlap a lot this is the overlap of temperature which remember said based on the analysis that the overlap is large is 0.70 something 79 i guess 
and but still it's not statistically significant so let's make the plot a little bit prettier you have a lot of rgl options to make this prettier and this is how it looks like now it does look pretty right uh at least the background now let's do that for the other set of dimensions and in this case is precipitation let me just make this bigger sorry and let's see the overlap the row plot again this actually here we have the name of the components there but i don't know i i, I think i changed one option from the previous plot and look the background how it looks like uh, it looks less full than the other one in terms of the amount of background inside the two ellipsoids. The two ellipsoids look a lot like each other in this case, more than with the previous one. Okay, let's make it prettier. Uh, let's see, both of them. So this is for temperature dimensions. And this is for precipitation dimensions. Yeah, you can actually see that these two overlap more than these ones. And here, the value of overlap was not statistically significant, and here it was. But how do you know that? Like, how can you visualize that? You can do these kind of plots. Uh, remember, you're going to have the code, so I'm not going to spend much time explaining, but this is how the test looks like. Let's see that for temperature. This is what we're seeing here. This value of overlap, the one that we're seeing here, is this green one. Okay? And the values of overlap that you can obtain based on randomly sampling the backgrounds of each species are these ones, the ones represented with histograms. In the lower 0. Uh, in the lower 5% confident, sorry, again, the lowest, the lower confidence limit for this distribution is this one, the one that corresponds to the 5% of the data. And here it's clear that you reject the null hypothesis. Let's make this a little bit smaller and put it here. Here. Okay. And now let's do the same for precipitation. And here you are. So look at this. And this is telling us that the value of overlap that we're seeing here is actually larger than the lower confidence limit that you can obtain by randomly sampling the backgrounds of the two species and doing the ellipsoid overlap for each of those replicates that we did. Okay, so this is the way to test that the value of overlap is actually significant based on the available conditions for your species in the area of interest in the accessible area for, for the species and this is how different dimensions different variables can give you different results so let's say something here so precipitation in precipitation they do overlap so changes in precipitation probably will have similar uh, effects in these two species. But values temper in temperature dimensions, this, these species do not overlap that much, which means that probably climate change is going to have, in terms of temperature, different effects on the two species. And there are a lot of, like, uh, you can discuss a lot more if you know more about the biology of the species. But again, 
these are niche models. They, uh, these are based on macroecological data. So uh, don't go that far. Just go till they allow you to go and find the reason uh, or find the importance of the results. That's the important thing. But this was doing niche overlap analysis using ellipse-cnm. I'm going to save that code and share it with you. And with that, again, thank you very much.